They say it takes both sides to build a bridge. But have you ever seen anything quite like this? If you want to find out exactly what on earth is going on in that clip, as well as seeing a whole load of other amazing stuff, then strap yourself in for another episode of Things You Will See For The First Time In Your Life. I think we've all seen enough ugly kids to know that the statement, all babies are beautiful, is nothing but pure lies. But I wonder if you can guess exactly what common creatures these freaky-looking spawns grow up to be. These little guys are actually baby hedgehogs, known as hoglets. In their first few days of life, baby hedgehogs look kind of like swollen, hairy tongues with legs, and it's an interesting mixture of adorable and bizarre. While these spiky cuties may seem like the perfect pet, Owning hedgehogs is actually illegal in some areas of the United States. The state of California, as well as the city of New York and Washington, D.C., class hedgies as wild animals, meaning they are not allowed to be kept domestically. Talk about prickly. The sky is pretty amazing when you think about it. Home to clouds, birds, and floating heads. <laughs> <laughs> While that may look like something straight out of a Japanese monster movie, this footage actually shows a giant hot air balloon looming over Tokyo City's Yoyogi Park. This peeping tom turned out to be an art piece called Masayume, which was part of an exhibition designed to display different random faces above the city. Masayume actually means a dream come true when translated from Japanese, which is fitting considering that the idea for this project came from a dream the artist Haruka Kojin had. More than 65 feet tall, this balloon portrait was based on a real anonymous citizen of the city. I just hope they weren't self-conscious. I mean, most people can barely stand their own profile picture, let alone a giant balloon of their own face. It's safe to say these floating heads definitely attracted the attention they demanded. Although I can't be the only one still waiting for the inevitable cry of, show me what you got. Thankfully, things turned out a little less chaotic for Tokyo on this occasion than if there'd been a real giant head invasion from outer space. From one overhead attention seeker to another now, in the sporting world, there is no greater nemesis than old Mother Nature herself, and bad weather can really make or break a good game. Take, for example, a classic all-American game of baseball. For spectators, the sound of a sharp crack as the bat comes into contact with an oncoming ball is commonplace. But if that sound is repeatedly overshadowed by the crack of thunder, like in this next clip, Spectators would be forgiven for feeling a little on edge. That's right, unsuspecting spectators at Fenway Park in Boston, Massachusetts, were struck with wonder, and probably terror, when they noticed multiple bolts of lightning crackling through the sky directly above the field. Slowed right down for our viewing pleasure, you can see every little detail of each bolt as it cracks through the sky. Turns out this lightning storm was so severe, the game was delayed for around two hours while the heavens took center stage. Thankfully for the Boston Red Sox, this light show wasn't the bad omen it could have been, and they ended up beating the Kansas City Royals 6-2. Quite the storming success. But leaving that storm to rage on, you'd think that once the sun comes out, everything should be back to normal, right? Well, not always, as this next clip shows. Okay, this is Vancouver, BC. I left this pan the whole morning. Uh, let's see if... We can fry an egg. <laughs> 
That's right. There's no stove in sight underneath this skillet. This egg was cooked to perfection using just the heat from the sun. On June 28, 2021, the city of Vancouver, Canada, was blasted by a record-breaking heat wave that reached 89 degrees Fahrenheit. And while most of us might jump at the chance to lounge by a swimming pool or simply chuck a bucket of ice over our heads, British Columbia resident Arturo Mendez instead decided to leave a frying pan out in his front yard all morning to absorb the heat. That's certainly one way to save on the gas bill. Having grown up in the desert in Sonora, Mexico, Arturo never expected to experience this kind of heat up in Canada, but the proof of this unusual heat is in the sizzle. Let's see if we can fry an egg. So, if you're ever invited to Arturo's for breakfast, you should know the only thing he'll be serving is eggs. Sunny side up, of course. Unconventional cooking techniques are one thing, but have you ever stopped to wonder how some food is really made? There are thousands of types of fantastical-looking sweet treats out there in all colors of the rainbow. And while Willy Wonka may be happy to indulge in a bit of Oompa Loompa exploitation, in reality, candy makers are in the business of getting their own hands dirty. And it's super satisfying to watch. If you're trying to chew over exactly what it was these guys were making, this is the process of making hard rock candy. The production of these sweet sticks hasn't changed at all over the last century, and it's still made today in a traditional way by craftsmen known as sugar boilers. The candy is made by mixing sugar, syrup, and water, which is heated to a spicy 300 degrees Fahrenheit. After the sugar mixture reaches the correct temperature, it is then tipped out onto a table with cold water under its surface which helps to cool down the mixture slightly for handling. But the sugar boiler must act fast before the mixture starts to solidify. The edges of the mixture cool first, but the middle can still be a scorching 250 degrees Fahrenheit, so great care must be taken to avoid burns. Some of the mixture is then taken to a machine to be aerated and flavored. This process turns the clear, toffee mixture into a soft, white substance that forms the center of the rock candy. The sugar boiler then wraps the mixture up in another layer of dyed toffee, creating an enormous mound of rock candy that gets stretched into the much skinnier sticks, which harden into the final product we see in stores. Pretty sweet, huh? Well, if it's sweet you want, wait till you see the antics the pair of playmates in this next clip get up to. <laughs> Come on, Alex, you can do it again. Come on, Alex, go a little further. <laughs> Come on. Oh, please balance, please. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, you almost had it. Meet Alex and Junior a pair of curious goats who live at Tammy Tunnison's Hobby Farm in Oberlin, Ohio, who stumbled across a seesaw in their backyard and had a little turn. While this wild ride proved a little too much for Junior, Alex was keen to remain and figure out how to rock himself back and forth on the wobbly plank. All this goading around also proved too much for the pair's owner, Tammy Tunnison, who can be heard wheezing in fits of laughter behind the camera as she looks on at the scene. Come on, Alex. Do it. <laughs> I'm not sure what's funnier, Alex and Junior's antics or Tammy's infectious belly laughs. We've all had those embarrassing moments that just make you want the ground to swallow you up. 
But what if I told you that being devoured by what's beneath your feet is a very real danger that could happen at any moment? This is a gigantic sinkhole which appeared suddenly on farmlands in Puebla, Mexico in June 2021. Measuring in at around 16 feet in diameter at first, the sinkhole grew to a horrifying 196 feet in diameter in just a couple of hours. Colossal nightmare craters like this occur when the ground can no longer support the land surface above it usually due to the erosion of below-ground rock by groundwater. The cause of this particular sinkhole was a combination of the softening of the farm fields, as well as the extraction of groundwater, which is all a part of farming processes that take place when areas of farmland are being cultivated. Now, though, I'm going to throw a guess out there and say this portion of land is probably not going to make for the best grain growing. But hey, maybe the farm can double up as a swimming park. Either way, after seeing that horrifying sight, maybe the next time you do something embarrassing in public, you'll think twice about wishing for the ground to swallow you whole. We all know that a magician should never reveal his secrets. But unfortunately, that doesn't stop other people from stepping in to expose the magic at work. <clears throat> Not that I'd ever do anything like that. But the subject of this next clip had his tricks exposed in the most public way imaginable. Check it out. This Chinese magician who goes by the name Embarrassing Man had his trick unceremoniously exposed as he performed on the streets of China in July 2021. It looks as though Embarrassing Man is in on the fun though as he, along with his faux nemesis who goes by the name Poker Face Man, regularly share videos just like this one on the popular Chinese sharing app Kuai Shao where they've amassed over 700,000 followers. And who doesn't love seeing the curtain pulled back like this? Although they do say some things are better kept as secrets. But I'll let you be the judge. What's not a secret is that here at Be Amazed, there's no magic wand required to get your hands on all sorts of amazing sites. Just swish and flick your fingertips at those like and subscribe buttons. You can even cast a spell on that bell icon to be notified every time I post something new. And with that, let's carry on with the show. The fact that more than 80% of our oceans are unmapped means it's no surprise that you'll find some strange-looking creatures down there that you've never seen before. We've covered a lot of peculiar creatures on this channel, but I doubt you've ever seen a fish as strange or as capable of pulling off a rapid outfit change as this little guy. Meet the Red Gurnard. A type of fish found on the sea floor typically at depths of around 600 feet. These colorful winged fish grow to around 11.8 inches in length and are most commonly found on gravelly, rocky sea floors around the Atlantic Ocean and Mediterranean Sea. While it might look like this bottom dweller is walking along the sand, those leg-like spindles are actually called fin rays 
that the red gurnard uses like fingers to search for food. As it shuffles along the ocean floor, the red gurnard methodically sifts through sand in search of small crustaceans that might be hiding beneath the grains. When he's not on the prowl for snacks, the red gurnard puts on quite the performance while swimming, displaying those beautiful wide fins that resemble the wings of a butterfly. While the true role of these colorful wings is still largely unknown, experts think they could be used to attract mates or frighten off predators. The best dressed fish in town, this guy really knows how to work it, gliding smoothly through the deep blue, showcasing that perfect butterfly stroke. Time for some more underwater marvels now. And while we all know that dogs and even cats can be trained to do some pretty impressive things, I'll bet you've never seen anything like this next trick. Uh-huh, this adorable little pufferfish follows its owner's finger with pinpoint precision as it makes its way through an underwater maze drawn onto the glass. Posted by aquarium enthusiast Amanda Montcrief, the clip showcases how she was able to train her pet puffer to become a real-life version of Pac-Man. Best of all, this porcupine pufferfish is just a baby. So who knows what could be next for this child genius? Backflips? Math equations? Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. As our puffer pal just proved, the connection between humans and animals can be truly amazing, and even heartwarming. But the teenager in the next clip made a connection of a very different kind, with a water-dwelling creature who was all too happy to pop up and say hello. I have 12 buckets mine. <laughs> yeah. Austin Craver was spending the day in the Florida Keys, where he and his family challenged each other to see who could have the most up-close and personal encounter with the tarpon fish that are found there. As crazy as it may seem, Austin and his relatives actually intend on the tarpons devouring their forearms as seen in the video. This practice is called noodling and is quite common in the southern USA. While it's mostly harmless, there have been cases where noodlers have received infections from bites, and some have even lost fingers. Still, in spite of any risk, Austin's family play by their own set of rules, namely that the person's arm with the highest scratch from a tarpon's teeth wins $20. I don't know about you, but that's one family vacation idea I'll be keeping off my list. If you thought those tarpons' mouths were huge, take a look at this. No, that's not Optimus Prime's toilet after an evening of Taco Bell. You're actually looking at the astounding, real-size anchor chains used to weigh down large boats. These guys look like mice next to the humongous human-sized chain links. These colossal chains are used to anchor the largest vessels, such as aircraft carriers and cargo ships. While the anchor itself often takes the credit for doing all the work, with ships that typically bear these chains, the chain itself is so heavy that it actually makes a substantial contribution to keeping things stable. While the chain's size may be a little intimidating, it's comforting to know that if we ever need to tie up a Godzilla-scale monster, we've got the materials ready to go. From giant chain links to a whole other kind of chain now. I've seen some animals do pretty amazing things in my time on the internet, but I can safely say that few things have blown my mind quite as much as what I'm about to show you. If you're still scratching your head, what you're looking at is thousands of ants building a bridge using just their bodies to invade a wasp's nest. But how exactly do ants build bridges like this? 
Well, it all comes down to a matter of instinct. When an ant is on the move and comes to a gap in its path, it slows down while the rest of the colony continue to barrel forwards at a pace of around 4.7 inches per second. When his friends catch up to him, the first ant has an instinct that tells it when it feels other ants walking on its back, it should freeze. This process repeats in all the other ants. They step over the first ant, but uh-oh, that gap is still there. So the next ant in line slows, gets trampled, and freezes in place, gripping the fellow in front. As this process goes on, the ants will continue to build a bridge to fill whatever gap is in front of them, and the trailing ants will walk right over it. What's more, most ants have tiny hooked claws at the ends of their feet, which help them to walk on the undersides of things. Unlike other insects like cockroaches and spiders, ants don't have sticky pads between their claws meaning that they have a hard time walking upside down on a truly smooth surface. Altogether, this may explain how this strange scene came about. In all likelihood, these ants probably began their attack on the wasp's nest by walking a straight path upside down on the ceiling. But when they were joined by enough other ants, they likely began climbing on top of each other. Eventually, their collective weight would have got too much for their limited grip on the ceiling, and as gravity took its toll, the bridge drooped and developed its hanging position. With their very own Antac on Titan, these creepy crawlies ended up forming a skin-crawling chain that falls from the roof and rises back up to the wasp's nest. Anyone else getting an extreme case of the itchies just from watching that? Well... I'm afraid this next clip probably isn't going to help. If you count yourself as a bit squeamish, I suggest you look away for the next 16 seconds. Meet Rosa, an eight-year-old Mexican red knee tarantula who put on quite the skin-crawling performance as she shed off a layer of skin. While condensed to just seconds in a time-lapse, it took Rosa around six hours to completely come out of her shell-like exoskeleton. As horrifically creepy as it seems, this process is completely normal and is necessary for tarantulas to grow. That molting shell that Rosa squeezes out of acts as a kind of external barrier to protect the spider's insides, as they don't have internal bones like us mammals. Unlike human skin, an exoskeleton doesn't grow in unison with the tarantula, so they simply shed their outer layer once they get too big for it, in a mesmerizing, and if you ask me, slightly nauseating display. But I have to admit, it's pretty cool to consider that while human kids may get a new winter jacket every year as they grow out of their old ones, Rosa gets a whole new body. While finding a spider even a twentieth of the size of Rosa is enough to send chills down some people's spines, I think I'd be set for a full-blown heart attack if I came home to discover this. The homeowners this skilled snake handler visited were the unfortunate hosts of an eight-foot-long snake that appeared to have made itself snug as a bug in their ceiling. It almost looks as though the rescuer is finishing the end of a little prayer before prizing open the bulging ceiling tile, and you can hardly blame him. It also looks like this slippery character has a slight bulge in the middle of its lengthy body, which probably means it had recently ingested something. 
I just hope these homeowners didn't have a cat that mysteriously disappeared shortly before this video was filmed. While there was no word on how the snake got up there, one thing's for sure. I'll be adding ceiling snakes to my ever-growing list of things the internet has taught me to worry about late at night. Ugh. So, which of the things we've seen today amazed, or considering those last few entries, shocked you the most? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to check out some of the other episodes in this series. And as always, thanks for watching.